Good evening. Please welcome city librarian, Michael Lambert. Wow, what a crowd. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the San Francisco Public Library Caret Auditorium. I'm Michael Lambert, I'm your city librarian, and I want everyone to leave with a big stack of books tonight, okay? Can you help me out? <laughs> I am so delighted you're all here. Your San Francisco Public Library is proud to foster shared experiences for our community to engage in civic affairs such as today. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out to be a part of this exciting moment. We have so many incredible leaders in attendance this evening. Our Sheriff Miyamoto was here earlier today. His Chief of Staff Rich is up here in the front row. Our department head from the Department of Environment in San Francisco, Tyrone Jew, is back here. Uh, I saw Hagen Choi, our chairman of the Soul Sister City Committee, and our city administrator, Carmen Chu, who we'll hear from shortly. Yes. You know, it was just earlier this year in March that our very own Western Edition Branch Library was the site of the launch of the very first quarter in the American Women's Quarter Program series, featuring the famed writer, poet, and social activist, Maya Angelou. Former U.S. Treasurer, Rosie Rios, former Mayor Willie Brown, and Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, were in attendance to witness the historic event. And today, we are so thrilled to once again host the United States Mint to launch another quarter featuring the talented trailblazing actress, Anna Mae Wong, who was the first Chinese American film star in Hollywood. The library is so proud to partner with the US Mint and our local partners, the Center for Asian American Media and APA Heritage Foundation to host the screening of the Anna Mae Wong documentary and the panel discussion to follow. I wanna thank Stephen Gong, director of CAM. He's right here in the front row. Thank you, Stephen, for your ongoing partnership and leadership to present stories that convey the richness and diversity of Asian American experiences. And of course, I want to acknowledge a phenomenal woman who needs no introduction in this town, Claudine Ching, president of the APA Heritage Foundation. <laughs> Claudine is the driving force behind so many efforts to celebrate the culture and heritage of Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders in San Francisco, as well as efforts to foster cross-cultural exchange and awareness among all the diverse communities in San Francisco. We owe her so much gratitude. Please join me in welcoming Claudine Ching. Good afternoon, thank you for being here. I just take a moment to gather my thoughts. I can't believe it's kind of surreal that we are here celebrating the launching of a coin with an Asian American on its base. I think it's kind of surreal. Um, many of you were around when uh, 30 years ago exactly, when we celebrated uh, the issue of the first postage stamps, postal stamps, uh, honoring um, Chinese and Asian Americans in this country our Lunar New Year stamps 30 years ago. And at that time, some of us sat sitting around and thinking, what else can we do? Um, what about on a currency, on a coin? But the idea at that time grew so far-fetched, <laughs> we kind of dropped it, because we didn't feel, simply do not know how to get about uh, doing that. And here we are today, and it's amazing. It's a significant chapter in our history. Um, many of you have generously, or some this week, over the course of this week, have, have congratulated me. And I and and to to clarify, I really I wish that I said I have something to do with it, but I have nothing to do with bringing about this coin. But I do feel very passionate, like all of you that take the time to be here, that we should celebrate this very significant chapter in our community. This morning, um, it's all about education, as I understand from my new friends from the United States Mint. 
Um, this morning, I had the opportunity to go with John Chu, who is the branch chief and education chief uh, of the U.S. Mint, to uh, visit a fourth grade class at Gordon J. Lau School. Thank you, John. And it was very exciting because uh, we were, John was going to explain to them what, how the coin was made, uh, what is a coin, and start collecting coins, and, and the history of all of that. And so I asked them to, to, to just break the ice. I said, okay, who has heard about Anna Mae Wong? I am surprised that so many kids raised their hands. And they said, and, and, and they said, oh, you know, she's the first Asian based on the coin. And one said, oh, you know, so she grew up in Chinatown. And the one that I'm most impressed about, the, the little boy, he, sa uh, she, he said, she, she fought discrimination. I said, wow. I mean, those kids were prepared. If, that, if, that's, uh, if that's our fourth grade class, I think we have a lot of hope. Uh, it's really amazing. And I must say that I, I understand that the coin is really uh, also a tool of education. The coin is to celebrate American women uh, whose achievement have been under-recognized, uh, that they have done a lot for the country, and yet you know, maybe not a lot of people uh, know about them. And Anna Mae Wong was one of those. I must say, I just learned so much about her these last two weeks. I mean, it's amazing. And, and then I was like, hmm. And, and, um, and looking around this room, um, I know all the women here, friends, and, and all the women here. I mean, this is what the COIN program is about. It's about really celebrating um, you know, the achievement of American women, which we are all a part of. And it's really about time. I want to thank Michelle Thompson from the United States Mint, who, who we'll hear from later, because it is her vision that really drives this at the United States Mint. We all know how difficult it is to drive through a piece of legislation through Congress and make this actually happen. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. So, um, so here we are, and I certainly hope that this is, this is a four-year program. This is the first year, and Anna Mae Wong was the last coin of, the four, uh, uh, of this cycle. But I look forward to seeing in the future, in the next three years, certainly look forward to uh, celebrating. I believe that there is a coin coming on uh, uh, celebrating also our Pacific Islanders. So we are very excited about future announcements. And, you know, it's all about also telling the stories and inspiring our younger generation about little kids and they can look up to and say, hey, that's Anna Mae Wong, I can be there too, because in her time, uh, she was never able to play a major role in the movies. She was always either in the silent movies or she was you know, really playing a minor part. So, but looking around, I think that in, in but, they're, but they're all inspirations. And looking around the room, I do feel a lot of energy because I know many, almost many of you out there have done so much for our city, for our community. And um, the next speaker that I'm going to introduce is one such inspiring person to me. Our city administrator, uh, Carmen Chu, has over 17 years of experience in public service. She really have dedicated her life to our city from being um, in the mayor's office, to being elected to the board of supervisors, to be our assessor, and now our city administrator. And she, she's so busy, and she's a mother, but of a young mother, and she had to go home and balance all of that. It's really amazing. Um, let's welcome Carmen Chu. Good evening, everybody. I'm Carmen Chu. I serve as a San Francisco City Administrator, and I'm so honored and proud to be here with you all today. Um, I want to, before I, I say a few words, I just want to thank, of course, um, our city librarian for continuing to honor the tradition of public education through your facilities. It's not just about the act of borrowing books and educating yourself through that channel, uh, but the, the library has truly been a place where they open up their facilities to make sure that all kinds of information, any kind of public education and awareness that they can do to help educate our residents is done through our public learning libraries. And so I just wanna say thank you to him because he continues to um, push that and I think that's an amazing thing for our, our city's library system to do. Uh, to Claudine who of course people know and know how hard she works at every opportunity she 
takes the time to uplift the voices and experiences and stories of the API community. And I think that's incredibly important, especially at this time when we see so much uh, anti-Asian hate. Um, and this is something that we deal with on an ongoing basis. When I was a young girl and even today, whenever the tides turn, the economy turns, um, issues arise, uh, we find ourselves sometimes the perpetual foreigner, no matter how long we've been here or how long our communities and our families have been here. So I want to thank her for continuing to raise the stories and the awareness because it's so important uh, and not everybody does it. So thank you, Claudine. Let's give her a big round of applause. And of course, to Stephen with CAM for all the work that they do to uplift uh, the APA voice. I think it's really important, especially in an underrepresented field. So thank you very much for all that work you do. So I'll really just keep my comments short. I think I'm just really pleased and honored to be here. Uh, I think Claudine mentioned I'm a young mother. My daughter is three and a half years old. Um, she is a handful. <laughs> Uh, I had no idea what I was in store for. You give me city administrator, assessor, board of supervisors, no problem. But my child, oh my goodness, I am a pushover. Um, but what I want for her mo more than anything in the world is for her to have every opportunity that is possible. And I think that many people in this room can identify with that because whether it is you with your own families or your parents who came before you here, um, the, the point was always to create a better life for all of us so that my daughter doesn't have to limit herself to say that it's not possible, to say that she's going to be discriminated against or that she's not going to have the same opportunities as others or that her voice won't be heard. And so my hope for my daughter is that she will see more of people who look like her in positions of power, in media, in news, in governance, in politics, everywhere in arts so that she can reach for the stars and she will never be limited in the same way that so many of our families and our generations have been limited. And maybe that's a pipe dream, but I think it's a pipe dream that's worth going after. And I want to thank the U.S. Mint for helping to tell the stories of our Asian American community because it is really important to see our faces everywhere. My daughter has come to really enjoy playing make-believe with me. And one of the things she likes to do is make me buy things that are in her room <laughs> and we're playing with money and paper money but I'm really going to be proud to be able to hand her some quarters um, and money to play with that's actually going to look like her and I think that's going to be a really great thing to be able to say is that we're not an afterthought we are part of the American history here so I want to thank again the U.S. Mint for recognizing this and I hope that there will be more opportunities and more stories and more people we uplift through this process so thank you very much I have certificates of honor here that I'm going to leave behind to share with you, um, but I did want to make sure to, without further ado, introduce Michelle Thomas, uh, Thompson sorry, with the U.S. Mint. Um, she's going to tell you a little bit more about the program that brought us the Anna Mae Wong Quarter, and I'm delighted to introduce her because she came all the way from Washington, D.C. Uh, to come join us today. So it's a big deal that she's here with us to commemorate this wonderful day. She is the program lead for the American Women Quarters program at the U.S. Mint. It's a four-year program to honor the accomplishments and contributions of diverse U.S. women that includes also Maya Angelou and astronaut Sally Ride. So quite a lot of women that I think we should be recognizing over time, and I'm really glad for this program. So Michelle, thank you for making history happen, and why don't you come on up? All right, hello everyone, good evening. It is really my pleasure to be here and to join so many distinguished and passionate people to celebrate the release of the Anna Mae Wong Quarter with this very special event. Recognizing and honoring women on our nation's currency matters. Our coins tell the American story. They reflect what we value as a nation. And we value women because women matter. For the first time in history, the United States Mint is issuing circulating quarters through a coin program that is solely dedicated to honoring American women. Beginning in 2022, this year is year one, and running through 2025, five different women 
will be honored annually. On the reverse, that's just the tail side of the quarters. This diverse group of women that we are honoring truly reflect a wide range of accomplishments and fields. The honorees have helped to shape our nation's history and their contributions span the centuries from the birth of the nation to modern day. At the Mint, we see the work we do as connecting America through coins. It is our distinct pleasure to connect Americans to Anna May Wong, who left a lasting legacy for Asian American women in the, in the entertainment industry. With a career spanning motion pictures, television, and theater, she faced persistent discrimination in Hollywood. That fourth grade boy was right when he said that. Um, but she continually championed the need for increased representation and more multi-dimensional roles for Asian American actors. Many people consider the coins that the US Mint produces to be miniature pieces of art. Our very talented pool of artists continually amaze in how they could express the values, aspirations, and shared heritage of a nation, all on a canvas the size of a quarter. This coin's design truly exemplifies the strength and determination it took for Anna Mae Wong to become the first Chinese American film star in Hollywood. It was designed by United States Mint Artistic Infusion Program artist Emily Damstra, and it was sculpted by US Mint medallic artist John McGraw. The reverse side of the quarter, the tail side, features a close up image of Anna Mae Wong with her head resting on her perfectly manicured hand. And even in this quarter, she is truly captivating. I think that's something when you watch her films, when you see her photographs, you can't help but notice this woman. And now millions, hundreds of millions of people will be able to notice her too. She is surrounded by the bright lights of a marquee sign, which you saw a lot of in 1920s and 1930s Hollywood. And the inscriptions include United States of America, Anna Mae Wong, Quarter Dollar, and E Pluribus Unum. Unifying the entire coin program, all 20 coins of the program, is a new obverse or head side. Now it still has George Washington on it, but this was designed by one of the most iconic female sculptors of the early 20th century, Laura Garden Fraser. So in that respect, we're really honoring 21, pro 21 women with this program. These pioneering women of the American Women Quarters program represent vastly different fields of endeavor, talents, and skills, yet they all share a singular commonality. Their contributions were groundbreaking. They had a lasting impact on society, and none of these women would ever settle or accept the status quo. All of our 2022 honorees influenced others and paved the way for each new generation. We hope their stories inspire you and connect you to the history we all share. At this time, I'd love to call up Ms. Claudine Cheng to the stage. So Ms. Cheng. <laughs> Come on out, Tracy, you too. On behalf of the United States Mint, I would love to present to you two American Women Quarters, one from each of our production facilities who are making the quarters in Philadelphia and in Denver, to the Asian Pacific American Heritage Foundation. Thank you so much for your dedication in promoting this. And providing... And just the fact that the community can get together like this and celebrate Anna Mae Wong is spectacular. So I don't want you to feel that you're left out. We brought a little something for all of you as well. Um, as you exit the event tonight, <laughs> as you exit the event, you will each receive an Anna Mae Wong quarter. Sure. 
And it's going to be in a commemorative coin board. It has spots. It's there. Th these are a hot commodity, guys. You know, <laughs> these these are pretty cool. Um, it has a spot for the four other women too. And I really hope that you are inspired to find the other four honorees and, and add them to your collection as well. So it is my pleasure to introduce Stephen Gong. Stephen is the executive director of the Center for Asian American Media and has served in this role since 2006. He was previously the deputy director of the Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive at the University of California, Berkeley, and associate director at the National Center for Film and Video Preservation in the American Film Institution. Without further ado, please welcome Mr. Stephen Gong. You've been all been so patient, and now we know we'll be rewarded. This is this is so exciting. Um, I just want to say thank you to Michael Lambert. He read the uh, mission statement for CAM so well, I don't have to do that. Uh, many of you know that we hold an annual film festival called CAM Fest. And in fact, our emeritus festival director, the beloved Masashi Niwana, was right here in the audience. Um, and I bring that up also because the film we're going to see tonight, right now, as soon as I can get off this stage and you can get me, uh, get me out of the way, uh, a documentary film that we showed at our festival in 2011. It's called Anime Wong in Her Own Words. It was directed by Yuna Hong, who is a award-winning filmmaker in New York. And unfortunately, Yuna could not be here with us tonight, but I did want to say in her behalf, uh, this is a really wonderful, uh, her background is in, in experimental forms of media, and uh, she did work in video, and, and uh, she produced about eight other films up till now, and all of them pretty much have to do with the achievement of Asian American women. So this is her first feature length project. It's one hour and it was also broadcast on public television. And I think what the essence of this film is, it, it relates very much to some of the remarks we've heard tonight. Uh, Anime Wong's uh, career was, was terribly prescribed and limited because of the racial codes and because of the prevailing decision making in the entertainment industry. And the fact that she broke in so early during the silent period. And even though uh, she is an, a pioneer, not only in, in uh, motion pictures, but also in television, she had one of the very first television series. But definitely, as you will see, um, she, she didn't have the kind of career that uh, any of us would want for our creative, uh, the creative parts of our community. And, and so uh, what Yuna was wanting to do was using her own words based on letters, correspondence, uh, she was, and, and remarks uh, in interviews, she wanted to piece together what the real anime Wong was about because you won't necessarily find it by looking just at film clips of her, the film she was in. Um, I don't want to say too much more. We can get into this. We have some very special guests for a conversation afterwards, both uh, about this remarkable uh, uh, unveiling of, of, of putting uh, a member of our creative community on, a, on our currency. And we've also got some wonderful examples of how far we've come, what the distance is now uh, when, when women can truly be recognized as creative equals in the entertainment industry. We still have a ways to go, but I think that what we're feeling is this sense of excitement and possibility once again uh, to create stories that represent truly the diversity of our country. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy the film. And we will, in the Q&A part of the, um, of the conversation, uh, we'd love to hear from you so you can be thinking of questions you might have um, based on the film you're seeing and uh, the wonderful introduction we've had about how representation matters. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. Wasn't that a treat? 
Hmm? Very good. Okay, it'll just take us a couple of minutes to get our special guests here. Maybe I will uh, I'll pipe them on stage now and introduce them. Well, you've met uh, Michelle Thompson, the program lead for the American Women Quarters Program at the U.S. Mint. And now we, um, this is a special treat for me, one of my, one of, one, of, one of the rare privileges I get is to uh, introduce Joan Chen, uh, the renowned, the many times honored uh, Asian American actress and film director. Uh, Joan grew up in Shanghai and uh, was a movie star in China even before she came to the United States. Uh, you may know her best from Bernardo Bertolucci's The Last Emperor, also Twin Peaks, the series. And we at CAM uh, honored Joan in 2012 um, at our 30th festival and sh by showing three of her films. It was the premiere of White Frog. And we also showed Saving Face, which was a wonderful film. And of course, the film that she directed, Shushu, The Sent Down Girl. Uh, please welcome Joan Chen. <laughs> Very good. And now um, to round out uh, the conversation we're going to have, I'd, it's my great pleasure to welcome Krista Marie Yu, an Asian American actor who grew up nearby in Lafayette, California. Uh, she's best known for her roles on television. She played the main role of Molly Park on the sitcom Dr. Ken, the role of Jen on Last Man Standing, and she now has a featured role of Elaine Kim on the Hulu series Reboot. Please welcome Krista Marie Yu. change venue. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you know what? We're going to start with a little bit. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We're going to start by connecting it, you know, back to this incredible occasion of the U.S. Mint and this special program that honors the achievement of American women. And, you know, what we've said is, is just so remarkable that we feel in yet another milestone in a big way that we're seeing and that we have a place here. So I want to start, Michelle, a little bit, fill us in a little bit of how this happened, how it came about, how you all came to choose Anna Mae. Uh, what was that process like? Absolutely. Well, back in 2019, um, we were nearing the end of a 12-year quarter program, the America the Beautiful Quarters Program. And we needed to come up with something that would replace this uh, for circulating quarters. The circulating quarter is the workhouse, like the, the workhorse of our currency, of our coins, um, producing hundreds of millions of quarters annually. Right now we're on almost two billion, over two billion for the American Women Quarters Program this year alone. So we started doing some market research uh, and determining what America wanted to see reflected in their currency. Um, we learned first off that a 12-year program was entirely too long. People didn't want to look for quarters. I, I had a, a father who said to me, I started collecting coins with my daughter as a seven-year-old. And by the end, she was a 19-year-old and she just wasn't excited anymore. <laughs> and he ended up filling up all the books of the coins by himself. So we wanted to get something that resonated, and something we kept hearing about in, in research was honoring women and American women. Now, the Mint just can't go out and change our circulating quarters and our coins. Um, we need this to become law in order for us to do this. So legislation was drafted, and we found some phenomenal bipartisan support um, in Congress. We had Senator Cortez Masto. We had uh, Senator Deb Fisher, your own representative Barbara Lee from California, as well as Representative Gonzalez from Ohio. You know, so people really came together in support 
of this bill, which did become law. It became the Circulating Collectible Coin Redesign Act of 2020 and just passed in January of 2021. So then the fun began because it's one thing to envision this law, but then you sit back and you think, oh my goodness, we have this amazing, historic, groundbreaking program coming up, and how do we start? How do we choose these 20 women? Because I think if we were to talk to everyone in this audience today and say, give me your list of 20 women that you would honor for this program, everyone's lists would be different. But in reality, the stories of women hasn't been told before on currency. We had Sacagawea uh, on the golden dollar, we had Susan B. Anthony, but we've never really looked at accomplishments of women and did a whole program focusing on that. So the law requires us to consult with three different groups. We have the National Women's History Museum, the Smithsonian Institution's American Women's History Initiative, and the Bipartisan Women's Caucus. They all had some ideas and recommendations on who they would like to honor based upon all women who are honored have to be deceased. That is just the law for coins. Um, but <laughs> making sure they were underrepresented. Well, because we, we did have some people who call in and, and they would say, my mom is fantastic. and <laughs> I'm sure she is. I'm sure she's wonderful. Um, but we also sought public opinion as well, and we received over 11,000 submissions um, through a web portal that the National Women's History Museum held for us. So you take all this information, and then you have to start going through and identifying who these women could be. Because we wanted to make sure, when you looked at this program, that a little girl or a little boy can turn the quarter over and say, this is someone who looks like me, or this is someone who is interested in something that I'm passionate about. And it's, it's extremely inspirational. Um, so we make these recommendations of the five women, and then they are passed on to Secretary Yellen, the, the treasurer, the secretary of the treasury, Secretary Yellen, and ultimately she makes the final decision on who these five women are. It's all in her hands. Fascinating. Um, well, I think we do understand why um, being deceased is a prerequisite. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have nominated John Chen. <laughs> uh, Thank you. So, so John and it'll happen. It'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> One day, <laughs> I'll be deceased. No. Is what I mean. <laughs> um, so we'll hold uh, Michelle. We'll get back to the phenomenon of of the quarters program. And I will have a follow-up for you all. But you know, I want to turn it to this to the special program that we have. And I take it when you as you've gone around with the other quarters, this is a rather unusual thing in a way to try to show a documentary about the subject and and have some exemplars, some role models that we're so proud of, right? In our community um, that that we have these achievements. So I did want to turn to this, and I want to ask uh, you first, Joan, and then Krista, if you would follow up too and think about this. You know, one of the things that we think about, or I think about when I think of Anna Mae Wong, she truly was, um, you know, uh, tried to straddle this cultural divide of being Chinese and being American at the same time. And they, there were some conflicts by the tremendous freedom and ambition that she had to make the most of her life, um, which I think is a human condition, but I do think culturally uh, with her family, it was a real challenge as we saw in the documentary. Her father didn't quite understand motion pictures. They were just getting started. I wonder in your own journey, and, and Joan, um, you might need to fill the audience in. I know a, a bit about your own journey, but you coming to this country at, at a fairly young age, uh, and yet you had been picked out for, for uh, you know, for film acting in China even. Uh, what what was, was your family supportive of your journey? Huh? It, my situation was, very different uh, because I grew up during the Cultural Revolution and we 
didn't get to choose our professions. Um, so you don't aspire to anything. You aspire to be the best kid in the mechanism of socialism. Um, so that was that. And uh, but I was picked out of school at age fourteen. Like like <laughs> like she. Um, that's how I started. I just got picked out of school because I was on a rifle team and they needed um, a girl to play the gorilla girl. Um, so there was, so for me, acting was apprenticeship and somewhat like what she did, we learned on the jobs. Um, and it's been fantastic. It, I, I can't complain. And when you came to uh, the United States, yeah, uh, was it your, still your ambition? How did you follow through then when you kind of came here? It really wasn't my ambition at all. I was assigned actually to star. After my first like um, small part uh, that I was chosen for, uh, the movie then stopped because the producer was Mao's wife and she got arrested and so we stopped. <laughs> And uh, somehow, um, one of the a very influential Chinese actress started an acting school. And she said, well, you know, if, you, if you're interested, just come to my school. And I was so happy I didn't have to go back to high school. <laughs> and so that's, I picked up acting there. But it wasn't really like my dream or anything. <laughs> it, it was good that I didn't have to be sent down to the remote region and, and do, you know, physical hard labor. So that was good. I think I didn't become really passionate about acting until later. Like I, I starred in four movies before I came here. And I was 20 when I came here. And I think when I was 22, when they made um, Zhang Lo, um, Michael Cimino. Oh, uh, you, was it, were you in Year of the Dragon? Year of the Dragon, okay. So finally, I heard of a script that's going to have like a leading Chinese character. I was 22, speaking terrible English, and she's a newscaster. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna learn English. <laughs> and I tried so hard. I, I worked in the restaurant, $5 an hour as a cashier. And uh, the dialect the dialect coach is like dialogue coach, um, like 200 bucks for two hours a session. I was like, okay, I'm gonna have it. I, I want this part. And so I went back to like so many callbacks, months of it. I mean, looking back, I was wrong. I would never have, but they, the casting director somehow kept me there and it gave me hope. And that was my biggest heartbreak ever. It was never had an audition that broke my heart as that one. And I realized that uh, it's a profession where your hard work and and results really do not <laughs> correlate, you know. Um, but that became a challenge, and I think that's when I started to become more passionate because I was tested. I was tested. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Yeah. I, I hadn't heard that story before. That, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Your, and it was Year of the Dragon, which is really a terrible film. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It wasn't, it wasn't the best portrayal of, but so rare that you read there is a Chinese lead. Um, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we're going to get back to that, but, I, but now it's Krista's. And I wanted to set this up right because a lot of us in the community know, Krista, know your parents, uh, Alan and Margot, who are right here in the front row. Um, and and I, I think one of the themes that we've been talking about then, you know, is families and, and what we want for our children and, and how grateful we are that our families came to this country, uh, so many of them with that belief that here there was this kind of freedom to pursue your dreams. And yet um, 
a parent's probably greatest wish is to protect their children at the same time. And I know you're uh, a parent now too, John. But but Krista, on that sense, um, tell us a little bit about you know your own decision to enter this arduous profession, and you know the kind of conversations you might have had with your you know, with your parents about this. Yes, um, I will say that I am incredibly lucky for the parents that I have. They have modeled how important community within our Asian American, specifically within our Asian American families, is. Um, because the more we bond together, the more we can work together to have our voices heard in a way that we are important and just as much as you know who, who, whoever else is on any kind of American currency. So it's every little step of the way, whether it's like an on look fashion show or you know my dad like donating to to um, to school or. Um, Gosh, Square and Circle Club. My, my grandma is actually um, Alice Fong Liu. She uh, has also been somebody who's a trailblazer. For those of you who don't know, she was the first Asian American or Chinese American public school teacher of San Francisco. So my roots and my pride run very deep. Um, when seeing Anna Mae Wong, when seeing Joan Chen, hearing about Joan Chen and all the hard work that you've done, um, and then just recently seeing you in Tiger Tail too, like it makes sense why you were picked out of so many people and prevailed not only in Asia, but here. Like that, that scene oh. in Tiger Tail, everybody has to see it. It was um, riveting how, how grounded you are and how you've grown over time. Um, like you said, you started so young that that's not, that's not um, something you would expect from a woman even in the entertainment industry. There's so much media, um, deep-seated assumptions via media like that we saw in this documentary too, that you're expected to play a certain type for so long. So to watch you grow with your characters um, is something that's truly inspiring to me and that definitely takes hard work um, and yeah, I think um, that I may have gone on a tangent, but it all starts from people like my parents who um, have made me believe that I can do it. And then you see people like Joan, you see people like Anna Mae Wong who, who do it, um, and then you believe you can do it too. That's fabulous. I want to stop and think about it. <laughs> Hey, I feel like we've kind of done it. I think we've said all that we have. Uh, no, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop there. Um, let's stay on something important about, about, well, actually, Krista, what I wanna ask you first is, what was your worst audition experience? <laughs> my worst audition experience? Um, my heart gets broken a lot. Um, rejection, I mean, as, as hard as it was for Anna Mae Wong, it's, it's still incredibly difficult. Um, there have been many times where I've been told like I don't, I don't look right or they're not looking for my type, which basically means they're not looking for your race. Um, you're not this, you're not that, you're not this. Um, specifically one really, I don't know if it was a bad audition, but I also poured my heart into it and they didn't know how to place me. And they, they said, well, instead of just this one part, why don't you learn all three and the song and the stands all in one day? <laughs> so this one scene, I had to learn all three different parts. Um, I was also a bridesmaid for my cousin the next day. So I, um, I, I poured my heart into all three parts, memorizing it, memorizing the dance. Um, and uh, then I got a call and they said, oh, actually, we decided you're not even going to, uh, I got to the end, to the very, very end, and it's called a test. And they said, um, you know what, we decided actually we're not going to um, have you test. Which, uh, so I was rejected even before I got to, the, to that part. So mm -hmm. I would say I get rejected 99% of the time. Um, <laughs> I look in the mirror every day and cry. No, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. Again, it's, it's, it's people like my parents who, you know, continue to support me or people like, Again, Joan, or, you know, Tamlin Tomito, we saw her up there, and we know that the passion is there. And when you see people who do it for the right reasons versus for um, fame or money, they're really doing it because they love it. Like Anna Mae Wong, she did it because she loved it, and there was no other option. She said, nothing is going to keep me down. No one's going to tell me otherwise. She even had some kind of illness and um, prevailed anyway. 
And I think that kind of mentality is what gets us through. I mean, my mom has always said, be 10 times better than the average. And I hope there'll be one day where we don't have to feel that. Like, I do feel like when I'm at work, um, I, there's no room for mistakes, whereas maybe for some other people there are. Um, so I hope that the, the understanding of that and the support and the allyship, thank you, Michelle, um, just continues so we lift each other and allow space for all of us to grow and make the mistakes and um, realize that those mistakes actually bring us to a better place. Oh, thank you so much. And yeah, Joan, I would love for you to, yeah, thank you. And Joan, you, you've mentored so many of the actresses that you've worked with. We know that's on Saving Face. I wonder if you would talk a little bit about that kind of bond that you have developed over the years. Mm, yeah, Saving Face was one film that we really still eat together. I think we came back for the 20th anniversary. And so you do um, find people who inspire you, who are passionate and really good at what they do and support each other. But I have to say that it is a tough business for any race, for any race at all. So everybody, every race gets rejected many, many times over. And that's just the nature of the beast. And that's the gamble that you that you take. Um, I think you just need to be, you just need to be obsessed. And you can't live without it. I mean, if you can live without it, then don't do it. Don't do it. And that's just, that's how I feel. I mean, I'm sure, you know, you feel, I'm, I feel for you when, when you talk about the rejections. I mean, in my younger days, it's like every time if they said no, it's a blow. It's not a rejection of your resume. It's a rejection of you. <laughs> your entire being, heart and soul and everything, and your looks and your pimples and everything. And so it, it is extremely difficult, but so wonderful, so exhilarating. You know, once in a huge, once in a big while, you get that one scene, and that just makes it all worthwhile. And you live for that one scene, and that is good enough. That is good enough. Yeah, and it's impactful to people like me who get to see you do it. But even if you're not an actress, you see yourself reflected on screen, and you understand, or you see yourself on a quarter, and you're like, oh, I'm as important <laughs> as Benjamin Franklin? That's kind of cool. Or like, wow, like I could be as beautiful as Joan Chan. Like, oh my gosh, like, wow, like I could be a love interest the way that Joan Chan is. Like, it's really important, like how we are reflected. If you only see a certain race getting these, these parts, then, um, then you assume you can't. There's just some subliminal message that we all receive via like visual, visual entertainment. Um, and also, in terms of rejection, sometimes most of the time you actually just don't get a no. That you either get a yes or you just don't hear. Ghosted. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, in hearing this, um, it, it does seem it completes the circle. This is everything that you, in designing this, want to see happen. That representation matters. That this quarter will last beyond our lifetimes. Uh, the symbolism is so important, but it's connected to real community. I wonder if, I wonder how you feel about the kind of energy as you unveil this program. It so we knew that it would be popular among the coin collecting community, right? We we knew that it's the new program, it's a four year program. It, we've never done this type before, so we anticipated that. But I don't think we really understood how embraced this program would be. We had people who never talked about numismatics as coin collecting, but never talked about anything like that. Suddenly, I mean, Oprah did a video blog about us and Drew Barrymore tweeted about us and we were in People Magazine. And it's just so exciting because people started to pay attention to this and they suddenly started to want to learn more. You know, and, and you go through it and you're looking at the women who are being honored and there's a, a collection of 
women who some are more well known and, and some we didn't think were as well known. And then you get surprised. You get surprised by the communities as they're coming forward. I mean, Anna Mae Wong was trending about two weeks ago. Yeah, it just out of nowhere, she was mm -hmm. trending in social media because everyone was <laughs> clamoring about the quarter. You know, like it just it made her and it made her story want to be heard by more people. And that that is something that I think is so valuable in this program. You know, if you know the woman and you you turn over the quarter and you recognize her, that's phenomenal. But if you don't know the woman, that's even more exciting because you get to learn and you get to learn their stories. And, and you sit back and you say, why didn't I know about this woman? How, how could I have gone through 40 plus years of life not knowing who Anna Mae Wong is? That's shameful. You know, but you can't, I, I can't dwell on that. I can only dwell on what we're doing for the youth and for everyone else. It's inspiring, it's exciting. Um, so I, I hope that in seeing the representation, you know, the, it, it's actually in the law that this is a program that needs to be diverse, racially, geographically, across time periods, even across fields of study, because we are a diverse nation and our currency really should reflect who we are. And this is a step towards making that happen. It's Thank so great. Much. Thank you. Thank you. It's great. Well, we're close to the end, and I, I don't want to keep you from your special keepsakes. <laughs> we have one more very special guest. Yes. Uh, Claudine, you, would you like to do the honors? Ah, uh, yes. We'll, we'll do one more and then we'll bring out our specials. I do want to mention one thing. Um, I know a number of you follow the uh, Silent Film Festival, our beloved Silent Film Festival. They are showing, we are showing, I'm on the advisory committee, Toll of the Sea on December 3rd at the Castro Theater, Save the Castro Seats. And uh, if you would like to see that, uh, please consider dropping by. Um, and I, so I want you to reflect on tonight, and we have a member of Anime's family here that we would like to uh, come out and say a few words about her relative. But um, yeah, I don't know if you have any last thoughts about you know, community representation. Following your passion, I think, might be one of the things that we really want to talk about. The, the, do you feel a responsibility? This is something I wanted to ask maybe Joan and, and uh, Krista. Um, you know, do you feel in some ways a responsibility or, it, or, or do you feel that that might hamper your own work? Or do you feel a responsibility to community in a way and in the roles you would accept and uh, that you would play? Well, I think it's inevitable. I think, you know, that sometimes even when I sit here, I was like, oh, maybe I even represent China. Uh, because, you know, how I behave, they might perceive what the Chinese are like, or Chinese Americans. Sometimes it's just inevitable. But as far as movie making is concerned, uh, it's my passion. It, it has to come from a deeply seated place. It's not what I believe or mm, um, I think. It's nothing like that. It is I feel, how I feel. That's the most honest part of you. And that's the part you give regardless of race, gender, anything. So that's my answer. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I do. I do feel a lot of pressure um, because it meant so much to me to be represented in someone beyond just like Trini and the Power Rangers. Um, and I do feel like the community is a big part of this. And um, one thing that I do hope that people um, can understand is yes, like just what Joan said, this, this is also our passions. And I do think sometimes our Asian American community, because there are so few of us out there, there is, we're under this magnifying glass to have to represent all of China or all of San Francisco or all of the entire, like I was the only Asian American 
teenage representative that, that year, girl representative that year in 2015 on Dr. Ken. Um, and I think it is easy for us as Asian people, I don't know if you guys resonate, but I do, to be like, oh, it's not this enough. It's not that enough. I am not this enough. We are not that enough. Why are we not getting A pluses in everything? And um, I, I wish that we all understood in a loving way that the more we support each other, even if it's not the perfect representation, the more um, people who are outside our community will be like, oh, wow, yeah, I could see that Asian girl as a lead. But if we don't support that and we pick apart the reasons why it's wrong, we won't even get those opportunities more. So even though the door is cracked open, we all have to band together to pull that door open together and like cheer everyone who's walking through it. Um, and that's what I hope, I hope we all do. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Thank you all so much. Um, sorry, we're kind of at time. Would you? Thank you so much. Thank, yeah. thank you to our panelists and thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Thank you so much. Can you just take Should two minutes. Here, so yeah, please. Just, okay. okay. Go ahead. So. Um, no, I, I really just felt that it's such a good discussion and bringing everything together with the, with the coin and the role of the woman and the struggle. And I, I feel that what Krista said really resonate with me because we, we, we sometimes our community, we are our own worst critics. I mean, we, this seems like there's you know, something very Asian about being critical <laughs> of, of ourselves <laughs> and of others that look like us in the community. And it's so it really so important to be supporting each other. So I want to thank all the panelists for you know, your perspectives. It's very, thank you. Um, so I just thought that as we were planning this event, I just thought that how can we talk about anime wrong without having a member of the family then we were scratching our heads and then two weeks ago when i went to the the, the mins event at paramount i ran into the family and i'm so excited uh, because uh and, and to learn uh, having learned so much more about anime wong and to know that uh, she actually has a niece by the name of anna wong and i so so i have to introduce myself say please come please come because i think that you know this program will not have been complete, will not be complete without us hearing from a member of her family. So let's give a warm San Francisco welcome to it. Anna Wong. Thank you. Thank you, Claudine, for that lovely introduction. I'd like to thank everybody who was involved in selecting Anna Mae Wong to be part of this American Women's Quarter program. It is truly an honor, and my family and I are beyond thrilled. People call me all the day, every day, and they say to me, when this first happened, they said, did you know your aunt's gonna be on a quarter? And it, it, I had heard a while ago, so I was thinking, oh yeah, yeah. And it, it, it was, it's truly exciting. Um, so I thank everybody at the Mint. I thank everybody that was involved in selecting this. Um, when I first got the call, actually, it was interesting because someone from the Mint called me, Mr. Greg Weinman, who's, who's excellent, who's not here with us tonight, but he called me and told me that, that she had been selected. And I said, I, I, and I'm so sorry, but I did not think the call was legit. <laughs> I, I, said, I said, well, um, you should speak to my attorney. So he spoke to my attorney and my attorney called me and said, you need to talk to this man. He's really, he's what he says he is. And I said, okay. So I picked up the phone and called him and here we are today with this lovely quarter. <laughs> Um, this was interesting. Anyway, um, Anna Mae Wong found her passion for acting at a very young age. She is, as you, as you well know, as you've heard people say, she is the first Chinese American movie star in Hollywood. Um, it's, it's very, you can Google her and you can come up with something like, I don't know, something like seven million dollar, million hits you get on there as you, and to see her. And it's very interesting. I, I did it once and fell down that rabbit hole and, uh, um, but it's very interesting. It's, it's very historical, and for people to know who don't know about her, it is very interesting. People who do know about her always find out something. I never knew that. I, did you know that? And, and, and I learned so much about her. And for people, if you're a movie buff, you probably have heard about Anna Mae Wong. If you're not a movie buff, you learn about her, and uh, children, generations who don't know about her, they learn about her. And that's 
part of the, what they think the Cordes program is, is doing. Sally Ride and all the other women, influential women. They want people, the, the Mint wants people to learn about history, influential people, people that maybe um, you learn about. You may not know anything about, I didn't, I didn't know that much about Sally Ride. I actually Googled her, because you know, Google is your best friend. And uh, I Googled her and I also realized, wow, this is so interesting. And, that's helpful to me, I think, for people and for younger people and generations and everything. Um, Anna Mae Wong was a part of movie history. She was a part of Asian history. And now she's a part of this historic Women's Quarter program. Um, I'm honored to be named after her. I am thrilled that she's getting, she's still making history today. She would have been 117 years old this year. <laughs> yeah. And um, maybe I shouldn't have said that about her age. Um, don't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, but um, I'm so thrilled that she's getting this honor. And uh, it's beyond amazing that everybody's so turning out. I was at the quarter event in LA. And the people, the turnout was amazing. We, they, there were people, we had to turn people away, right? There was people, and I'm sure, and this was, this was completely full. And so I truly thank you for everybody for keeping my legacy, my aunt's legacy alive. Um, I am proud to be part of her legacy and I will continue to keep her legacy alive and fight for equality among Asians and of all ethnicities. So thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to bring up John Chu with the Mint. John. <laughs> thank you, Anna. Let's give Anna another round of applause. <laughs> Anna flew in today from LA this afternoon and is flying out tonight, so she made it for this special occasion. So thank you, Anna. Okay. It has truly been a pleasure for the men to honor Anna Mae Wong, the first Asian American on a circulating coin with you tonight. I'd like to close by thanking Michael Lambert and the San Francisco Public Library for hosting this event. Claudine Cheng and the Asia Pacific American Heritage Foundation. <laughs> Stephen Gong and the Center for Asian American Media. <laughs> City Administrator Carmen Chu, she had to go early, but. <laughs> Joan Chen, of course. <laughs> Krista Marie Yu. <laughs> Anna Wong. <laughs> Michelle Thompson and our U.S. Mint team. And everyone here joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes the program. Thank you and have a great night. Uh, I also want to um, acknowledge all the community organizations whose logo you've seen at the back of the program. And in the, if you were here earlier in the loop uh, if before the program started, I just really want to thank all the organizations and especially uh, the two city agencies, the San Francisco Human Rights uh, Commission, whose uh, representatives are here, and the San Francisco Film Commission, our executive director, Manishay Pater, is, is here. And so thank you so much uh, for your support. and. Um, enjoy your coin. <laughs> Thank you.